In A Christmas Prince Who Watches Amber, an American reporter who has been mistaken for a tutor falls in love with a prince named Richard. In A Christmas Prince 2, we watch as Amber and Richard try to plan a wedding in the midst of an economic crisis that is impoverishing the nation they are supposed to be ruling. Instead of a movie about a regular girl living our collective dream of marrying a prince, Think of this movie as a political drama about an out-of-touch royal family and in the last year they celebrate Christmas before they are ousted by the People's Revolution. So don't click away now! What are you, a class traitor? I'm Lainey and I like to talk about movies, TV, and other media. I'm trying to get to 200 subscribers by the end of the year, so if you haven't gotten me anything for Christmas yet, you know what to do. With that out of the way, let's get into it. Some of you may be asking, Lainey, are you reviewing the sequel of a movie without reviewing the original movie first? And to that I say yes, that is exactly what I'm doing. Because although A Christmas Prince, the original, is an objectively better movie, it is far, far less interesting than A Christmas Prince 2, The Royal Wedding. All you need to know from the first movie is that Amber is a regular American girl who is about to marry the king of a small, fictional European nation. Richard is not a symbolic figurehead, he has real political power, he can make laws, he can like pass things, he gives talks, bleh. And this one smallish choice by the writers turns the entire royal family from the protagonist to, to the villains of the story. So Amber arrives in Aldovia with her father in preparation for the big day. Her mom's dead, like in every movie. Mom's always dead. We are reintroduced to Emily, who is the younger sister of King Richard. I have so much to tell you. School's annual Christmas pageant is coming up, and I've been cast as the lead role. I'm definitely stealing this point from Jenny Nicholson, but if you're the princess, you don't get to have the lead role in everything. That seems like you, you're getting too much. We are also introduced to the queen, who is by far the best actress in the whole movie. She acts pretty much exactly like how I would expect a queen to act. We're gonna be family. It's a brave new world. Very Julie Andrews performance. Amber is taken to her bridal suite, and we finally get to meet our boy, King Richard. Hey! Sorry I wasn't there to greet you. Oh look, I understand why they cast this actor. He, he has the look, he's tall, he has a really square face, um, but when he opened his mouth, this man has no charisma, no charm, and absolutely no chemistry with Amber. Anyways, they're about to get it on when Richard is interrupted with some important country running matters. Later that night at a welcome reception, Richard is once again whisked away to go deal with some other political dealings with like the prime minister and stuff. I don't know how this country is run by both a king and a prime minister who are both making the laws, but Again, we're just not gonna think about it, okay? I should go save poor Richard. No, you should not, Amber. This line is written like Amber is going to go rescue Richard from talking with like her weird cousin, but Richard is not talking to your weird cousin. He's talking to the prime minister and other advisors about serious economic issues. And I think, Amber, you should leave him alone. And luckily, the queen agrees with me and stops Amber from going over and distracts her by introducing her to her wedding planner, a man named Sahil. This, this shall be Sahil's greatest achievement. I have some feelings about Sahil. Mostly I don't like that they make him talk in third person the whole time. I don't get why that's supposed to be fun. After the wedding conversation, Amber learns that Mrs. Avril, who is the character from the last movie, has been promoted to be in charge of the media relations of the royal family. It's clear that you've had a very laissez-faire attitude concerning your image over the past year. Basically, Amber has been oversharing on the internet. The goal is to see you and the crown in the best possible light. Well, nothing shines quite like the truth, right? <laughs> Amber is about to marry a literal king, and all they're asking of her is that she doesn't broadcast every single little detail of her personal life to the world, and she's like, no, I must share what I had for breakfast every morning. The couple's behavior only worsens as Amber and Richard sneak off so that Amber can give Richard some economic advice. Well, you know my initiative, uh, bring Aldovia into the 21st century. Strengthening infrastructure, schools, tech, it's smart. Well, that's what I thought. But instead of strengthening the economy, the country's bleeding money. Nobody can tell me why. Is there anything I can do to help? You are not a part of this government. You are a former journalist who struggled to tutor the elementary school-aged Emily in math. You really think that you're going to be able to solve an economic crisis? I do respect the confidence, though. 
If there's one thing Amber has in this movie, it's the audacity. So as Richard is off solving all of that, Amber is forced to do more wedding planning. In the real world, your wedding, your choice, but this isn't really the real world. This is the royal family, and as the queen, your only job is to like throw weddings and big parties to distract from the terrible job your husband is doing running the country. I'm looking for something more contemporary. The kingdom of Aldovia has over 700 years of history and tradition. Which I, I respect, but times are changing. <laughs> the worst, the worst. Amber is the worst. I didn't realize that becoming part of the royal family meant having to give up who I am. That's like exactly what it means, Amber. Princess Diana tried to be her own person, and look what happened to her. In her next move, she decides to video call her only two friends to complain about the wedding. This protocol is driving me crazy. It's like Bridezilla in reverse. Forgive me if I don't ooze sympathy from the night security desk of Noodle Shelley's corporate office. Can you imagine your friend video calling you from her like billionaire palace complaining about her wedding not going exactly as planned as you're sitting at your desk at your like minimum wage security job? Straight to hell, Amber. Straight to hell. So later, Richard has a press conference and it is interrupted by protesters and I am on, I'm on the side of the protesters. And so seeing all of this mess, Amber decides that as queen, she has the responsibility to also try to run the government with Richard. Who do you think balanced dad's books at the diner? I know, this isn't a diner, it's a kingdom. And I'm gonna be queen, I wanna contribute. What a crazy thing to say, Amber. So what happens next? Christmas stuff. Did you forget this was a Christmas movie? I certainly did. Whatever you two are discussing can wait. I have an urgent matter vital to all of Aldovia to discuss. And what might that be? The people of Aldovia demand a magnificent royal Christmas tree to make them proud. Shut up, Emily! I'm sorry, I don't mean that she's a child, but I'm sure the people want to get paid for their labor way more than they want the king to like put up this big tree. And the fact that Richard thinks that this tree is going to solve anything just proves how incompetent he is as a leader. So the next day, Amber and Richard are about to leave to go get the Christmas tree, and they are interrupted once again. Unions are calling for a nationwide strike in solidarity over unpaid wages on our work programs. And this is the first time where it is described what is actually going wrong with the country. The fact that these workers are working and they're not getting paid, which is a very legitimate reason once again for these workers to be upset. Pay the workers, Richard. Stop spending all the money on Christmas trees and cookies and your big parties. And so knowing all of these workers are going without pay makes all of this decadence and abundance and lavish parties just seem very distasteful and out of touch. Like the royal family is living in a completely different world than the rest of the kingdom. Does any of this worry Amber? No. Amber is only concerned when the union strike leads to Emily's Christmas play getting cancelled. Why is everybody leaving? The theatre workers have gone on strike in solidarity. Our performance is cancelled. Those damn dirty unions! Ruining Christmas! So Richard, Amber, and Mrs. Avril have a meeting with this man named Leopold who is going to advise him on the economic situation. Amber is now convinced that there must be some sort of foul play that is the reason the country is losing all of this money, and it is her job to investigate. But before we do that, we have some more Christmas stuff to do. Wait, 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 I want to make it look like I'm sledding with them. One second, okay? Oh, you guys lost them. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Oh. Wow, that was, that was so fun! So Amber, of course, as the villain, decides to cross the picket line and have the play held at the palace instead. You moved my play to the palace? How did you do this? It's a bad play, the kids bake cookies after, which I only mentioned because Amber was taking some photos, which she then went to publish online. So of course, that night, Miss Blogger here decides to post all of the pictures from the child play and cookie making thing online. Mrs. Avril then deletes the blog post because it's kind of a bad look to like post a bunch of pictures of this lavish party you threw for the princess and her rich friends while there are people who are literally starving in your country. This is how revolutions begin. And Amber's reaction to this is absolutely crazy. Did you censor my blog? Truly a supervillain. Later, Richard and Amber have their royal photo taken, and I only mention this because it is maybe some of the worst editing I have ever seen. Who edited this photo? Why is it only from the chest up? This is maybe the worst royal portrait I have ever seen. 
And you know I've seen many royal portraits. That night, the family is having a Christmas card opening party, and they receive a letter from a citizen who has lost his job. I've lost my job as the company I worked for my whole life was put out of business by your new Aldovia disaster. Thanks for nothing but a big lump of coal in our stocking this year. Bar humbug. Boom! Roasted! I am 100% on the side of whoever wrote this letter. And so Amber's two American friends arrive, and instead of doing a bachelorette party, she makes them go with her to track down this mysterious man who wrote the letter. You're wrong about the royals. They do care. King Richard has barely slept since I got here. <laughs> and I'm supposed to feel sorry for him. Can you imagine writing a letter expressing your displeasure in how the government is being run, and then the significant other of the country's leader like shows up to the, your local bar and is like, hey, you, you sir, you are wrong, and I'm here to tell you off about it. I would not be flattered. I would be absolutely terrified. The guy does give them some helpful information. He tells them about this mysterious new company that has been having some sketchy business dealings. And so the group decides to investigate. The other guy in the group is Simon. He is Rich's cousin, and I'm not gonna talk about him because he doesn't matter. The group begins to do research on this company when Emily goes into the room and is like, hey everybody, I can commit cyber crimes for you and hack into the website. And she does because she's awesome. Thanks to Emily, we are able to learn that Leopold, the man from a few scenes earlier, has been embezzling a lot of funds out of the kingdom, and that is the reason they're going broke and people are going unpaid. The next day, the tabloids wrote a story about Amber going bar hopping, which is also kind of a bad look, and when she's confronted about it, she gets really upset and runs off, which causes this whole big thing. Richard is able to track her down, she's at this cabin they went to in the first movie, and he convinces her to come back. So they go back, everyone's like, oh wow, you, you've returned! And the couple are the worst, so they're like, we're back and we are replanning the whole wedding that's in like three days. After all of the work Sahil and his staff did, they are just scrapping it all and making all of these people start over. It is such an evil thing to do. I know it's your wedding, but you can think of it as trading, uh, you're planning your wedding for a lifetime of luxury and never having to work again. And to me, that seems like a fair trade. I think Amber needs to get over this. Richard also confronts Leopold about embezzling the money, which sucks because Richard really did not solve this. It was solved by Emily, a little bit Amber, but definitely not Richard. I'm sorry, Mother, but there is a threat to the monarchy. Lord Leopold. <laughs> I'm sorry? <laughs> what, what, what earth do you mean? The new Aldovia initiative has been failing because you have been siphoning off the money. <laughs> Aldovia is a patriarchal hellscape. Again, the movie should have ended here, but they still have to do the wedding part, so we have that. Uh, Lainey, did you like the wedding? No, I thought her dress was ugly. It looked like it was made out of, like, stiff sheets. But that's it. Um, so, children, what did we learn here today from watching this movie? I think we have three things we can take away. One, monarchies are an ineffective form of government. Two, Richard and Amber are the worst. And three, we should support workers' rights. Yes, we should. So is this movie good? Uh, Ah. It's a silly movie, but it's also super short. It's only an hour and a half. I would recommend this one. Um, it's a goodie. It's a goodie. It's a classic. Uh, and that's it. I'm Lainey. This is my channel. This is a reminder that you should totally subscribe. What did you think of this movie? You should leave your comments down below or suggest other movies you want me to review. It's almost the end of Christmas, which means I'm back to regular content. And I will see you in the next one. Oh, I got a phone call. Thank you.